What's up guys, Joe Snow right here today with great news for iOS 9.2.1 users. So if you didn't update your device and if you're still on iOS 9.2.1, there might be a hope for a new jailbreak utility. And I'm gonna show you why I'm saying that and why you might be lucky. Because yesterday, the uh, this guy right here, mine Zeng, just released a video in which he's demoing the iOS 9.2.1 jailbreak by flying jail, jailbreak JB. And it's basically an application created in Xcode using a couple of exploits. You know, I'm going to just play the video so you can see. And he's basically um, showing you that he's running the uh, iOS 9.2.1 on an iPhone 5C. The problem is that this jailbreak, before we get very excited, this jailbreak is only compatible with uh, X32 devices, 32-bit, which means no iPhone 5S, no iPhone 6, 6S, or anything higher than the iPhone 5C. And basically, this is a problem, but this also isn't compatible with the um, iPad Pro or something like that, so no. But um, this jailbreak is not even completed yet. It lacks the sandboxing module, which basically allows a couple of things to be uh, to be done, most important things in a jailbreak. And it doesn't have Cydia for the moment, just because of that. But it has terminal, and here, this guy basically writes the uh, password, the Alpine, for the root, and writes a very important comment, which is the uh, comment right here, you name, which will bring you the, uh, the kernel, the Darwin kernel version, as well as the um, data and the time and the XNU version and so on. This is very important and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell you why. You remember GS Magic? we talked about them in a previous video. They uh, basically say they have a jailbreak utility that they are going to release and they posted a similar video like this one in which they uh, demoed their um, jailbreak utility, but they didn't um, release anything and they proved fake. How is that possible? Well, their, their proofs were basically um, a video in which they're basically showing the Cydia version, the um, iOS version they were running, but they didn't start the terminal and write uname. Uname is basically the only application you can trust when it comes to jailbreak because it will basically tell you the um, version of the kernel and if the version of the kernel is not the correct one, you cannot modify that. You can modify the version of iOS using a property list file, a plist called um, system version or something like that, system version .plist. And if you modify that using iFile or using any other file manager on a jailbroken device, you can make the device device to think that he is jailbroken on a superior version. For example, if your device is running iOS 9.1 and you jailbreak with Pangu and you install iFile, you can modify the system file and make the phone think he is running iOS 9.3.2 and is jailbroken, which is in fact fake. But this guy right here is legit, and I'm gonna tell you why. At first, because he released the source code in the description on GitHub, and also because he has a very big background activity on iOS and jailbreak researching. Even though his channel is small, he is basically very experienced in this field, and I'm going to show you the source code he posted. There we go on his uh, GitHub account, Zeng Min. 1989 iOS ice and fire is called the project some Chinese characters which I don't understand what I can see here is obje objective C which is basically Xcode pounder and iOS arm 64 rope but this jailbreak is only compatible with uh, 32 devices and also this is not a complete jailbreak it's not a tool like Pangu that you can download and use. For the moment, probably he'll, he's going to release it, probably not. Hopefully he will bring at least a tutorial on how you can compile this code. It uses IOHID family plugin or text and basically has the kernel, um, uh, the kernel patcher, but 
going to show you in uh, in the next moments how the source code look like. Here is the source code you get if you download it, but you must of course know uh, very well C++ or Objective-C in order to be able to understand the source code and after that you'll probably not be able to run it. I'm going to show you how uh, far I go for the moment with the compilation. So the source code contains everything you might need, including a few uh, C++ snippets. Okay, here we go. With kind of strange names, talker, worker and human. <laughs> Anyways, and uh, we have here the, the uh, IOHID family text, probably with the uh, Xcode project, which is if you ask me a framework, probably modified, probably not, I have no idea. But you also have a couple of tools. The video that he posted on YouTube is also present in the archive you download from GitHub, as you can see from here. iOS 9.2.1, 13D15, and uh, the application he created, Flying JB, Exploiting, and so on. Anyways. Also, you have here an application, probably this application compiled, which only runs on iOS. This tells a lot of things, if you ask me. And uh, here we have the extra chapter with a couple of tools and a DMG file containing the uh, match OVU application. I'm going to show you if we mount it. It's the um, match OVU app. And also you have the mobile device, which is known for being able to install applications remotely to sideload applications in the .app format to the phone. I'm going to open it to show you. Okay, basically it shows that you can install, uninstall or do anything like that apps on the phone. And YOLO lib in class dump. Dump decrypted, it's a dilib file, also contains the C code I'm going to show you. Okay, it's it's containing anything from the uh, device itself. And what I basically found in my attempt to try to compile this thing, because it's very hard to compile, nobody knows how to compile it for the moment, and the uh, author didn't give any uh, explanation, nor any tutorials, neither any file to explain how you can use this thing. But here we have the uh, ice and fire project, which I'm going to open this zip file. I'm going to take it on the screen. And if you open the uh, application, which probably and most likely is this application from here, S sorry, this app right here running on the phone. If you open it, it's an Xcode project. And if you are a familiar developer for the uh, OS X, you probably know Xcode very well. And you probably know that it's the uh, main development uh, source the main development project framework and so on created by Apple in order to um, bring developers a tool. I'm going to go here to open and uh, I'm gonna load the project again. I'm gonna select the uh, iPhone 5s, sorry the iPhone 5 because it's only compatible with iPhone 5 and iPhone 5 and anything like that, 5c, um, 5, yes 5c, iPhone 5, iPhone 4s, anything that it's x32 and not 64. Uh, the first device having 64 is the iPhone 5s with which is not compatible. I'm going to click here to run the application but it will give build failed and here we have two errors. If you click here, this is what I managed to find. You need to basically from this error log, I understand that you need to go here on desktop. You need to create a folder, I'm going to rename it. Sorry. Okay. Rename it tools. Good. I'm going to close this. In the tools, you're going to go here. You need to create another folder. Object or OBG town. Okay. And in object town, you need to go in the uh, source code you downloaded in Objective C town. And you need to basically grab the files, but I think I actually modified the archive, therefore I don't have the files. I'm gonna download it again. I'm gonna open it. Just a few seconds. And 
let's see. Okay, you can see here it contains anything. The XPC sandbox bypass is basically the exploit for the sandboxing on ARM v7. You can find right here is a code, and I gotta go here into the um, this thing right here. I'm gonna get the Objective C pounder. And now if I go into the uh, Xcode and try to build again, it says, sorry, oops, I have to basically uh, take the tools folder and I'm gonna go to finder. I'm gonna go here in the uh, applications, show inclusion folder, users, go into your uh, user account and I'm gonna paste my, um, my folder here. Now it should work to uh, build this thing. Okay, so it said it um, did build the project. The emulator started automatically, showing the Apple logo. So basically I managed to build this thing, but it's not the form he has, it's a white screen, probably I don't know how to build it completely because he doesn't give any instructions on it, but of course it's a, uh, it's a new hope, this guy is basically legit and his tools look very legit, he also uh, has the source code published as you can see here and most likely someone will create a tool, a graphical user interface tool like Pangu and so on for this application, but for the moment we're struggling to build it. So here is the emulator, which will probably uh, work automatically. It's the iPhone 5, iPhone, um, iPhone 5 iOS 9.2, and basically the application starts automatically but remains here on the uh, white screen. This is basically what I, what I managed to do for the moment, and um, yeah, I really hope it's... Um, it poses a new hope for you, those being on iOS 9.2.1. I told you not to update a few times when iOS 9.3 was released, when 9.3.1 was released, when 9.3.2 was released, and so on. I told you not to update. Here we've got the uh, certificate used for this uh, device. I'm going to, uh, to get a uh, certificate for it. Is not available anyways let's see if we can fix it okay anyways this is basically it if I get to know how to compile it or if I manage to compile it uh, and make it work I'm gonna make another video in which I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you how to use it but keep in mind it's not completed for the moment and probably when he will complete it, he will release it or somebody else will basically make use of the code and release it. But yeah, it looks very legit and this guy also posted the uh, code in the description. It doesn't include Cydia, but this is not very hard to be included. It's a Debian package though. And yes, as you can see, a comment says, guys, it's open source, so hopefully someone will make a tool with a graphical user interface soon. Anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Really hope this is uh, basically posing a new hope for your device if it's still on iOS 9.2.1. And do not forget that after this WWDC event, which started today uh, at 10 a.m. the Pacific time, we'll probably get the iOS 9.2.2 jailbreak or 9.3.3 jailbreak from Pango or either Taiji. But till that point, hopefully somebody will make this tool live. Thanks for watching, I'm Joe Snow, till the next time do not forget to subscribe to this channel to stay updated on any jailbreak updates and till the next time I'm Joe Snow, peace out.